Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. Look behind me, that's what I wish for all of us for this facility of Ottawa. <laughs> Marcy Moore, she's Executive Director of the Ottawa Sport Council. That's the group that is there to advocate and work with the sports community uh, in Ottawa to advance uh, the sports and participation in, in our city. She's gonna chat with us about the impacts of COVID and also the opportunities she sees uh, in the coming weeks and in coming months throughout the summer. We're also meeting with Dan Shenyi, who works for the city. He's the Director General of Parks, Recreation and Leisure and Arts at the city. We're gonna chat with him about the provincial news uh, and the impact on our city facilities, on summer camps, and uh, what sports can start to play now. Obviously that, that information will continue to evolve. Let's take a look. Good morning, Marcy, how are you? Good, thanks, how are you, Matt? Good. My video blog this week is with the head of the Ottawa Sport Council, Marcia Morris. Marcy and I know each other for some time, and I thought it was very important for our community to see uh, how the sports community has come together over the last number of years, but even more specifically during this period. Maybe Marcy, for those at home who don't know, uh, can you tell us a bit about yourself and also what uh, the Ottawa Sport Council is all about? So the Ottawa Sport Council uh, came to fruition in 2013 as a result of community sport organizations asking for support and help. Um, across the country, 73% of community sport organizations are run by volunteers. So those volunteers are often quite taxed with just putting people into the field of play, let alone all the things that they have to do governance wise or financial wise or fundraising and um, they really needed support so in 2013 a number of us came together to um, establish the Ottawa Sport Council and we, we really have three main objectives um, in our support of the community sport organizations we provide education to them we provide advocacy for them and we also um, have created an endowment fund um, to ensure that everybody can participate in sport, especially those with barriers to access, be those barriers to access for a, um, a disability reason or a financial impairment or anything like that. When all of this broke, we were in the tail end of winter season sports. And, you know, the, the reality for those sports was huge in terms of their playoffs, in terms of their national championships. So the weekend that everything was shut down, um, there were actually the Ontario Provincial Ring Ed Association championships were on and the executive director had to walk into arenas and, and take everybody off the ice. So um, we were supposed to hold, host the nationals, um, the national ring at championship in Ottawa um, in April and obviously that didn't happen. So from a, a perspective of a disruption, just like every other aspect of our life, sports has been um, majorly disrupted. Um, you know, you then turn to summer sports and you look at all of these sport clubs that by now they should have been in the field of play. Um, in fact, May 15th is usually the opening of fields in the city. I was gonna say the long weekend, the long weekend. Yeah, usually yeah. Is and, and, bef and before that, of course, everybody's gone through their tryouts, they've picked their teams, um, people are starting to practice, games, you know, in many leagues would have started in a couple of weeks. So that registration hasn't even happened, obviously. So the big unknown is, number one, um, what, will, what will sport look like in the future? Number two, what will, what will be the availability of facilities within a municipality? Number three, um, what will people feel about sport? Will they, they be afraid to come back to it? So, um, you know, the impacts right now are, are everybody is mitigating them the same way that they're doing in every other sector, but it's going to be very interesting in this sector, just like other sectors, is what does the future look like and, and how is that going to change? I think at the end of the day, the little local community sport organization is um, really has to take all of that feedback that's being provided to them and provide their own plan. And that plan is so out of their control. So they obviously have to follow the mandates of their national sporting organization, their provincial sporting organization. Then they also have to marry that with what the city is saying and what the city is saying in terms of their facilities. And then they also have to marry that in terms of public health. And then most importantly, they're going to have to come up with a plan that, that meets the um, safety requirements of their participants. So it might be one thing that, that just like, for example, in Quebec with the schools reopening, the schools have reopened, but there are many parents, a, a large majority of parents who've chosen not to send their children to school. So 
it, it really it really doesn't matter what the the sports sanctioning bodies say if, if your participants don't want to come back and if you can't create that environment that makes them feel that that you are on top of it so i think the reality is that little sport organization is is really the the it's the first point of contact and they've got to get it right um, because they're dealing they're not dealing with high performance athletes they're dealing with you know the, the people on the sidelines that that have to feel safe about coming back and there aren't a million people looking out for them as they are for the the high performance athletes um, they have to they have to provide that assurance that what they can provide is going to um, be safe and be following all the guidelines before people are going to want to come back. So I, I see it as a, a slow, gradual return that, that, you know, it's going to have to be done in phases. And, um, and, and the reality is, just like with any other sector, is it affordable? So can, if, if, if we decide that we can, as opposed to putting, you know, um, 11 people on a soccer field, we are only allowed to put seven on a soccer field um first of all how does that change the sport but secondly is that affordable in terms of the facility cost is that affordable in terms of um the referee cost so there are all those things that are going to have to be balanced and and it ends up coming down to that that local sport organization that's got to put those all those pieces together and figure out what's best for its members to be joined uh, by the general manager of parks recreation and culture dan good morning Good morning, Councillor. Thanks for joining me this morning. I know that you and your team have had a lot, a lot of work over the last number of weeks to support the city in the COVID response. Thank you for, for the great work and collaboration. Well, on March 13th, as you know, the city uh, called for a state of emergency and closed all city facilities, and that included all recreation facilities. And within 24 to 48 hours, we had essentially shut down just about everything that we operate. Um, and we began the, the, the lengthy process of canceling a lot of our bookings, a lot of our sports groups are, you know, we're just entering into in the arenas, for example, or in playoff season. Uh, <clears throat> and in many of our facilities, um, we were about to start spring programming and had fully registered uh, a whole season's worth of activities. Uh, and so our staff spent a good uh, probably three to four weeks um, processing refunds, making calls to cancel, uh, trying to advise groups as best we could. This city has closed its facilities until June 30th. Um, but as you know, we're talking on the day after uh, the Premier announced some small openings uh, starting, starting tomorrow and next week. Uh, which will give us a little bit of breathing room in terms of using some of the amenities in parks as outdoors. Not a lot indoors yet, uh, unfortunately, but I guess that will come. Uh, with respect, and we know we're you know we're we're in May, and this is sports field season. That's when all the groups have been planning all winter. Uh, unfortunately, the open the 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 relaxing of the rules yesterday does not really. Uh, put us ahead all that much because they have not um, altered the maximum of five congregating uh, rule as of yet. And so even though people may have more easy access to sports fields for informal use, because up until now that was not allowed, um, I think the issue will still be that no sports organization is going to want to start renting fields and resume activities if they can only put five people on the field. Well, we're, we're hopeful. We have uh, over 10,000 people registered for our summer camps at this point. And, and we're, you know, there's still a ways to go. There's still a bit of runway in order to be able to, uh, to salvage a program. We expect that um, if it does come, and, and every municipality is, I think, thinking this way now, that if it does come, it'll probably be with reduced numbers, smaller groups. Uh, the province uh, has indicated in childcare settings that a maximum of five and five children in a group seems to seems to be where they're going. So I suspect that things like that, distancing, modified activities. I don't think we'll see the bus trips of years gone by. No. Uh, the the same activities. I think we'll be talking about a lot more outdoor activity. You know, on the sports fields and in in the air where people can can distance more. 
uh, and probably less so the inside specialty camps that taught specific skills but often required people to be close together. Uh, so we're, we're hopeful, we're making plans both for a possible first week of July start, which was our intended start, but we're also looking at contingencies that if we have to back that up to the middle of July, that we still have the flexibility to do that. Of course, recruiting and retaining staff under those conditions is going to be um, a challenge uh, and may ultimately determine how many kids we can accommodate in our camps simply because, um, you know, from an employment perspective, we were, were not able to commit. Uh, well, there's ratio, ratio requirements for safety, and we've always been yes. on top of that for sure. I've, I've seen that as a former, as a <laughs> former pool staff, I, 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 I certainly understand the importance of that, and we'll have to do so responsibly. 